Okay, today it's going to be four different things. So we're going to talk about Trump and his reaction to all of these revelations that are coming out. We're going to focus in a little bit on the January 6th uh, Select Committee. We're going to look at Merrick Garland and whether he's going to do something. And then uh, again, we're going to take a peek at Cassidy Hutchison, the uh, high-level aide uh, to uh, the chief of staff of uh, Mark Meadows, um, just to see uh, how life is going to go for her. So that's what we got. I hope you like the video. If you do like the video, please, if you like the video, if you guys subscribe, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with me. So yeah, Trump must be imploding, uh, realizing that all the people on the inside are getting ready to let what they know on the outside. So that's pretty good. So we'll talk. We'll view that. Now, uh, the January sixth committee. I just want to know if they're going to have an impact. If if the results that they're going to reveal are going to have a significant impact. Merrick Garland, the Attorney General, is he going to indict Trump? And then Cassie Hutchison, will she uh, be uh, adversely affected uh, by uh, Trump uh, uh, lackeys uh, pushing back at her so hard? So we'll, that's what we'll take a look at. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we're going to use this Heaven and Earth Tarot for all of those today. You know, the Trump uh, situation, the January 6th committee, and also Merrick Garland and Cassidy Hutchison. I love this deck. It's got kind of a black and white um, uh, noir kind of feel to it, which I think is kind of cool. And I'm so glad to be home and be able to use all my wonderful decks that I've collected uh, over the last few years uh, to do these uh, readings for you. And I hope you find them interesting, too. So anyway, so the first thing up is going to be Trump. Is he just imploding? What can the cards tell us about Donald Trump? Donald Trump... Yeah, how is he going to react? Is this going to affect him? Um, uh, is it going to go down? So whatever the cards can let us know about Donald Trump, that's what I want to uh, come out. So we'll spend a little time getting these uh, shuffled up nicely. And I'm going to do, again, a little bit longer uh, meditation piece um, in the beginning just because I have so many topics that we're working on. So here we go. Okay. Donald Trump. I thought I was almost over having to uh, read on that uh, clown, but um, it's not the case. So Donald Trump and all of this stuff that's coming out, is this what's going to take him down? Is it going to be um, this uh, female aide? Is everybody going to start coming out and telling what they know? Let's take uh, six cards and just do a dyadic cross, no more. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Donald Trump. Put those here. Donald Trump, what can the cards tell us about Trump? I really want to know if this is what's going to uh, take him down. Signifier card for Donald Trump is the uh, Two of Swords. Well, this is interesting. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. The Two of Swords uh, tells us that we have to make a choice. We have to go in a, a direction, one direction or another. And uh, this card happens to have uh, it described here as peace. I don't know if you can see it right there, but peace. So the signifier card for, for this reading about Donald Trump, with no really specific question, uh, happens to come up as having to make a choice, and it's called peace. Interesting. 
the challenge to that then, this is the queen of cups. And you know, cups are compassion, emotion, heartfelt situations. The queen of cups is uh, a compassionate queen and uh, someone with a level head and who's going to uh, be a, a salve or, or a help to uh, those subjects that are with it, uh, you know, her subjects. Well, so we got the uh, signified card being making a choice regarding truth, justice, rules, and law. And the challenge to it is this queen of cups, this calming influence. So perhaps what this is saying to us is that whatever way this goes, um, there's going to be a healthy dose of some uh, soothing um, uh, influence uh, for the public, which for me may mean that all the dirt doesn't come out. Uh, the base of this reading, just a general reading on Donald Trump, is uh, the nine of wands great strength. This is Trump. So the nine of wands is typically embattled. Look at this fellow. He's got a plan. He's looking very bitter. He's looking very unhappy, very sad. And he's a huge figure like Trump. He's got all of these issues behind him that are still flourishing. Look, they've all got sprouts on them. They're all growing up. So it looks like he's come through those issues, but they're not finished. They're still growing. Okay, but he's got a plan and um, he's ready to wield it. And this is called great strength. So that's the basis of this whole reading. This guy, if you can't give him anything, you have to give it to him that he can put up with a lot for whatever reason. The past of this reading on Trump is uh, the princess of wands. The past of this reading is a princess of wands. Wands are actions, forward movement, plans, uh, getting something done, lighting a fire under the situation. And this princess of wands is in the past. It, right away, it made me think perhaps of uh, Ivanka Trump, but I don't know that just this just seems too noble of a card to invoke her. She, in my mind, is actually a weak uh, figure, uh, personally, hiding behind um, I don't want to say strong men, but it is that. It's Trump. It's her husband. They, they're they not nice. They're kind of slimy, but they are strong and persuasive and uh, kind of bullies. Uh, although Jared in a quiet, um, a snaky kind of, kind of way. But uh, the past this reading is the Princess of Wands. So she's got the plans. She's, she's determined, but she's in the past. So I'm thinking that there's some female... Uh, energy that was keeping him going. And look at this tiger's head up in the sky here. That's very interesting. Yeah. So there's some kind of feminine energy in the past that I think is in the past now. It's something that was keeping him going. The sky of this reading, just a general reading for Trump, is the uh, Nine of Pentacles in the sky. So the Nine of Pentacles is that woman who's got everything that she needs. Look at all the pentacles lined up all around her. She has, um, she's dressed beautifully. You can see that she's in her estate, and that's in the sky. And I hate to say it, but this looks to me like there's some, again, look at all the female energy here uh, in this reading uh, regarding Trump. There's some female energy here in the sky of this issue for Donald Trump that is um, good for him, actually. And then the likely outcome of all of this for this dyadic cross, only going to go this far with this for Trump, is um, this two of, so this is the high priestess. This is the major arcana. And the, the, the thing that the major arcana, or the high priestess rather, tells us is that she has all the answers, the divine answers, the written uh, law. Uh, she knows how to use them. Her intuition is always on spot. She's uh, situated between the pillars of strength. And um, so, yeah, I would say this high priestess being the final answer here and another female figure, for me, just tells us that it's the women who have propped him up, uh, whether we know it or not. And it's the women uh, who are going to finally uh, be the strength that overcomes him. That's how I feel. And so that's how it looks to me. So we start out with the signified card, uh, Two of Swords, making a choice of truth, justice, rules, and law. And this is called peace. So somewhere to give us peace. And it's challenged by this Queen of Cups, this Queen of Compassion. So she's trying to bring us along this road in a compassionate um, uh, way. The base of this whole thing is Trump himself being embattled. And then the, the, or the base of it is being embattled. And then the past of it with this Princess of Wands, this princess of having plans is in the past. And I think he's running out of plans. In the sky, 
is the strength of this uh, matron, this rich uh, woman uh, who seems to be his his saint somehow. He has a, a strong female energy uh, coupled with that brutal uh, masculine energy that just seems to keep him going. And then the final outcome, though, is with this high priestess, is the high priestess is not going to champion evil. The high priestess is going to champion good and right and 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 knowledge. So I think his time is 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 waning but he's still very strong so look for a big fight from trump on the rest of this okay the next thing i want to talk about is the january 6th committee itself so we know that this is a, um, a majority of democrats um so many of the republicans weren't strong enough uh, brave enough um with enough courage to come forth and when we know that behind the scenes they're saying how they truly feel but in order to keep those donations going in they want to um, they're not going to give up on those folks who are you know sending in probably some of the last money they have to support them because somehow those folks feel those senators those Republican senators constituents feel like now they've got skin in the game in this ugly game so the January 6th committee um, what can the cards tell us uh, about that January 6th committee? And I think I'm going to do another uh, six cards for that, another diet across the January 6th committee. What can the cards tell us about them? I'm a little fumbly. I haven't had a, a normal situation to do my cards in recently. So six cards for the January 6th committee. One. Two, three, four, five, and six for the January 6th committee. Okay, what will the cards tell us about this situation? The signifier card for the January 6th committee. Okay, so this is the Four of Wands. This is very interesting. This is very appropriate, too. So the Four of Wands and Below here, this is defined by this deck as perfect work for the January 6th committee. Perfect work. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement, getting things done. And the Four of Wands for me is always a sort of a, they sometimes called the uh, wedding card for celebrations. But for me, this is always smallish celebrations on towards something bigger. And so, signified card for the January 6th committee, perfect work, smallish celebrations on towards something bigger. That's the signifier. I like that. The challenge to that for the January 6th committee is the Six of Cups. The challenge to this for the January 6th committee is the Six of Cups. Cups are compassion, emotion, heartfelt situations. The Six of Cups is telling us, um, you know, we wish things were, we're thinking back, we're hearkening back to when things were better, to the past. So the challenge to the January 6th committee and these smaller celebrations, this perfect work that they're performing is, and this is described as pleasure, because we want things to be happier. We want things to be better. And a lot of people are not paying attention to what's going on in the January 6th committee because they want to put all of this into the past and not think about it anymore. Uh, but we need to bring it up. It needs to be brought out into the open. So the challenge to this perfect work of these ones for the January 6th committee, committee is um, uh, wanting things kind of the way they were when they were calm and nice. The basis of this reading then ah, is judgment. Perfect card perfect card to be the base of this whole reading for the January 6th committee. They are about judgment. Love that. The past of this uh, uh, diet at cross for the January 6th committee, prudence. And this is the eight of pentacles. And this is getting your craft practiced down to a perfect T so that once you get everything done, it's perfectly clear what you produced. Uh, it's uh, something that you can be proud of. It's value that can be used and spent. And so the past of this reading is uh, prudence, this eight of coin, eight of value for the January 6th committee. And the fact that that's in the past makes me feel good. It makes me say, okay, they've got their plan. They've worked it out. Now they're executing it, okay? They've worked out exactly what they're going to do. And now they're putting their, their coins on the table one at a time, showing us I have this value, I have this value. And uh, so that's the past. In the sky of this reading for the January 6th committee, 
great strength. So in the sky of this, just like Trump, and I think this is still Trump, is they have to overcome him. And I love it when the cards repeat because that tells me that they're playing the game with us. They're paying attention. So this is Trump having overcome a lot of these issues, still willing to go forward. He's beat up, but these issues are still flowering. They're still growing and there's still more to come. The likely outcome for the January 6th committee then is uh, ah swiftness. This is called swiftness. And this is the eight of wands and the eight of wands, again, wands, actions, plans, forward movement, getting things done. And look, all of these, these are, this is uh, all of these plans that were in the back here because this is a nine. So all these eight plans, and he's holding that ninth plan, all those eight plans are right here and they're coming home to land. They're zooming in. And so this is what uh, is going to happen with the January 6th committee. All of their hard work is coming to pass. So signified card, four of wands, smaller celebrations onto something better. Challenged by what? We really wish things were the way they were in the past. A calmer, better time. That's what they're challenged by. But the basis of this whole thing is judgment. They've got to get the judgment out there and judgment is, is showing up on the table. Uh, in the past of this reading is all the hard work that they put forward to get this thing done. And in the sky of this is the beast that they have to overcome who's willing to fight more. But look how all of these issues that uh, he's uh, overcome so far are still flowering and they show up again in the final outcome with this eight of wands as coming home to roost. Love this. So these two readings have been very satisfying for me. Now the third thing is Merrick Garland because all of this hinges on Merrick Garland, um, you know, getting this thing done. The thing about Merrick Garland is that uh, he is methodical and um, dotting all the I's, crossing all the T's. He's not a uh, reckless. He's not going to put a foot forward if he thinks uh, that he will slip. And that's frustrating to some of us because we Americans want results now. And that's what Trump has delivered to these uh, followers of his. He's delivered to them some sort of an ugly, instant uh, judgment that most people want. If your neighbor is making a lot of noise, okay, and it's driving you crazy and it's persistent, you want the neighbor to shut up now. What, what do you have to do? You have to uh, call the cops. You have to get some uh, uh, reports on the record about what this neighbor has been doing. Then you have to uh, be willing to uh, prosecute the neighbor and stand up against it. All of that takes time, and that's not what we want as Americans. So for Merrick Garland, we're also going to do six cards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Merrick Garland. What can the cards clue us in about Merrick Garland? A decent man, okay? He didn't get, wasn't confirmed by Obama, and there's always a reason why these things happen. I really believe that. Okay, so Merrick Garland is the signifier card is exactly what I talked about, not making a step forward until you've made sure that you're not going to slip. This is the four of swords. Swords are what? Truth, justice, rules, law. And this night, um, the, the story, and this is called Rest from Strife. Rest from Strife. The, the story, one of the stories behind this particular card is that the knights after a battle, or before the battle, they might have their sarcophagus ready in case they would need it and they didn't survive. But after the battle, they would come in lay down, consider what they've been through. They've got their sword by their side, but they're cautious to get up because they don't want to get impaled by these uh, swords here. So this is Merrick Garland. He's taking his time. He's a diligent fighter. He's a knight with a purpose and a plan and a brain. Okay, He's not jumping up like a chicken with his head cut off. He's getting his ducks in a row, his truth, justice, rules, and law. And when it's appropriate, he'll lift himself up and move forward. That's the signifier. The challenge to that is right here in the Six of Pentacles. The challenge to Merrick Garden's plan, and this is called material success. So is this a Six of Pentacles, the Six of Value, is doling out 
the value. Look, he's got the, the almost the scale of justice in his hand here. He's weighing out all these pieces of value that he has to distribute them appropriately to, to make his uh, situation come to pass. So the challenge to his rest is getting this distributed appropriately. The base of this reading for Merrick Garland is the world, okay? This is a major arcana, end of the uh, tarot, and this is beginnings and endings, beginnings and endings. That's the base of this thing. He has to make sure that whatever he begins, he's going to be able to end. The past of this reading for Merrick Garland, then, with this five, six, seven, eight of uh, cups, the past of this is cups are compassion, emotion, heartfelt situations. You'll just hear me use the same definitions over and over. That's how they make sense to me in my brain. But the eight of cups is having to walk away from something of value. And there's a lot here. There's one shining cup or two shining, well, I'm sorry, but there are three shining cups that, uh, that look like uh, they're standing out. But the eight of cups is in the past having to walk away from value. So there may be lots of issues here that he's had to say, you know what? In my logical brain, I know that he's guilty, but I don't have what it takes to prove it in a court of law, and I have to leave that alone and move on to something else that I can prove. In the sky of this reading for Marilyn Garland, is, uh, this is the Ten of Pentacles. This is wealth. This is described here as wealth. And the Ten of Pentacles is uh, you know generational wealth, happy family. So I love that this is in the sky because this tells us that for Merrick Garland, okay, the issues, the values that he's putting forth are what's going to carry on into another generation and another generation and another generation. And that's exactly what we need. So no misplaced um, work here. And the final outcome for Merrick Garland is this uh, Princess of Wands. So again, but she shows up again, which I love, like I tell you, but she shows up again with a plan and a fire under her to move things forward. She's not in the past like she was in the previous uh, draw. She's in the, the final outcome here. Princess of Wands, feminine energy, determined, going to move this plan forward. Love this from Merrick Garland. So we start out with the Four of Wands, which is taking a beat, taking a rest before you uh, at your own peril. Then uh, challenged by what? By the Six of uh, Pentacles, really distributing that value appropriately. Underscored by the world, which is beginnings and endings. And then the past of this is washing away, walking away from some compassionate issues that you just have to leave behind uh, because uh, in this case, they can't be proved. In the sky, this reading is generational value. That's what he wants. And in the uh, final outcome of this is that feminine energy with a plan and a fire to get it done. Love that. Merrick Garland. Thanks, buddy. And then the final one here is I just want to talk about Kathy Hutchison. So she's the uh, aide to the chief of staff, Mark Meadows, who is the last uh, lackey that Trump had uh, uh, under his under his thumb, and who just seemed to sit back and twiddle his thumbs on his phone and watch um, Rome burn um, because he was too scared or too ineffectual to get anything done. Okay, other than let you know, I tell this story about uh, when I was uh, on my vacation. There was a baby. Uh, with the mother there in the uh, airport. We're waiting for the plane out of Frankfurt. And this child was probably about two years old, maybe, screaming at the top of his lungs in the airport, throwing a tantrum, uh, threw himself down on the floor. I mean, just the most obnoxious scene you ever want to see. And the mother was just turned her head, uh, looking at her phone, uh, pretending like nothing was going on. It was obnoxious. I mean, I'm surprised they let that family on the plane. But once they got on the plane, it was the same thing. This child continued that uh, rage um, for two and a half, maybe over three hours. It was, I tried to block it out myself. I put earplugs in and covered. But this is what Mark Meadows did. He just ignored the, um, the childish, uh, immature um, rantings of um, Trump. I thought, well, he'll get tired. He'll wear himself out and go to sleep. No, he doesn't. So I want to know for Cassidy Hutchison. Okay, I've talked too much about something besides Cassidy. So let me cut these cards so that they know we are talking about somebody different here. Kathy Hutchison. Kathy Hutchison. Kathy 
Hutchison. I'm just going to do another six cards, why not, to see what can they let us know. Is this brave young woman in trouble? Is she going to be okay? Is she going to be the one? I think she is the impetus that maybe finally is going to bring this thing to, to the beginning of an end. So six cards. One, two, three, four, five. Kathy Hutchinson. Kathy Hutchinson. Who would ever make it? And a staunch Republican. She said it herself. She is a dedicated Republican. So the signifier card for Kathy Hutchinson. That amazing witness. Well, we start out here with the uh, six of coins. And again, cards repeating themselves. I love it. And uh, this even looks a bit like her. And it's doling out that value. Distributing what she has to those who need to have it. Signifier card. Challenge to that is the lovers. Okay, so this is Major Arcana. So yeah, the challenge to her doling it is the lovers. And what does that mean? She is dedicated to the Republican Party. She felt like the agenda of the Republican Party was the right one for America. She That was uh, her lover. That was her passion. And so the challenge to her revealing this the the value of what she knows is the is is the fact that she really believes in her political party the base of this reading then ah is strife and this is the uh five of wands you know the five of wands is typically uh an abuse of power so the base of this whole thing is an abuse of power the past of this reading for kathy hutchison is the Knight of Pentacles. So the past of this, the Knight, the Pentacles are value, and the Knight is going to fight for the value he's been given. And this is the past, and that's what she's done. She held it all in. She rethought everything over, and she said, you know what? I've got this. I need to bring it out. I need to fight. And she's done it. Okay? The sky of this reading for Kathy Hutchison is defeat. This is the Five of Swords, and this is theft and betrayal, and that's what's in the sky here. And if you think she doesn't face um, a, a, a huge task in all the people who will try to uh, tamp her down and quiet her and discredit her and ruin her, thank God she's a young woman, so she's got some time to recover any reputation that they might try to uh, beat up. But the sky this reading is defeat. It's the seven of wands, and I hope this doesn't mean that she's going to have some uh, horrible uh, repercussions for having told the truth. Remember, swords are truth, just as rules of law. But the final outcome for Kathy Hutchison is loss of pleasure. And this is the five of cups, and this is really uh, being at a loss. So you, this is so sad because it looks like maybe this could be what happens to her. So this uh, uh, figure here has five cups on the ground. Three of them are spilt. Two are left standing up, but they have to turn around and see those two cups so that they realize they've got something left to continue the journey on. And it may be that right now for Kathy Hutchison, she might be seeing everything that she's lost by talking. You know, everything that's, and that's almost, you know, when something bad happens to you, you can almost only focus on that and not turn around and see what's good that's left. But it is something good left. She will turn around and see it, and she will be able to pick up something that's left in that compassion, that emotion, and carry on. So it, it looks like a difficult uh, bit ahead for her, but she's going to have something to keep going. So uh, six of uh, pentacles, distributing the value that she has, challenged by the lovers, which is her and the Republican Party, underscored by uh, abuse of power with his five of wands. In the past is her as this knight of value, fighting for what she knows is right with what she has. And in the sky of this is this... Um, uh, theft and betrayal, okay? That's the overarching uh, feeling of this whole thing. There was theft and betrayal that she couldn't be quiet about anymore. And then the final outcome, unfortunately, looks like a little bit of a hard time. She'll have something left to pick up and go forward with. And I just pray that she can and does and, uh, and things work out for her. So there's a way out for her. Thank goodness. So that's what I have for those... Uh, four topics today. I don't know if there were too many, but um, let me know what you think. Well, I hope you like these little bit longer uh, videos, and um, 
I don't have any way to judge that if you don't tell me in the comments. So tell me in the comments and let me know everything you think. I'm, I read all of that and uh, I try to respond to it and uh, give you what you want. So thank you so very much for watching me. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this is the Heaven and Earth Tarot by Jack Sifroth and Jamie Elford. And uh, these are Los Scarabio cards. And I got to tell you, these are great. Um, they come in a cool box with that magnetic clip on the side, which I like. The guidebook that there that comes with them is very useful. It's just a full size book that you could uh, sit and have a cup of tea and and read through it. The cards themselves, and it's a color book, which I appreciate. It may not look like these are in color, but this is how the cards are kind of muted with little pops of color here and there. And there's lots of nice suggestions on how you might use these cards uh, in uh, the divinations. And then the cards themselves are, are very nice. The um, I've not put them in the box well. The little discombobulated uh, here today. Um, I want to spread them out so that you can get a look at them and see kind of what cards look like. And although they're kind of uh, and in that noir style where they're black and whitish with just some hints of a uh, of very uh, shaded uh, color here and there um, you can see that they're gorgeous cards to use and um, so very nice uh, I do this so that uh, if you don't look at cards very often then you can uh, have a look at almost this whole deck you know because you can stop the tape and really zoom in on some of this stuff if you wanted to and uh, it's a nice way to mix the cards. If you're doing a reading for someone, you could have them uh, spread them out this way to kind of uh, get the cards mixed up. And um, that way, uh, everybody's kind of participating in the process. So that's the Heaven and Earth Tarot. Some cards that I love, love, love using. Well, I'm Mark. This has been My Journey Through Tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.